Hi Dragoneers, uh, welcome to another Red Dragon tutorial. And we do have a very interesting topic. Do you feel like your keyboard is not yet getting its full potential? Well, that's the one that we're going to discuss. So we're going to discuss about this FN1, FN2, and TAP. What are they for and how will this help you to maximize your keyboard? So join us. Okay, so think of this FN and FN2 as your special shift key that will unlock uh, another layers of additional key bindings, uh, attaching your macros, and so on. So you can have more key combinations that you can use. And for TAP, we'll go ahead and discuss it on another topic as, yeah, it's somehow what related to this too, but... Tap has a different function. Okay, so let's go ahead and start it. Let's download the software for a straight keyboard. Mine I'm using the Wyvern K869 Pro. All you need to do is just go to our website. This is our official store website, redragonshop.com. Click on software. It will brought you to the software page. Scroll down, click on keyboard, type the model of your keyboard minus a K689 Pro. Oops. There you go. Click on the icon saying Wyvern K689 Pro, and then click on drivers and downloads, and then you will see here the link. Bear in mind, guys, that the software itself is only compatible running by a Windows software or Windows operating system. We do not have a software compatible yet for Mac or other OS. So if you do have Mac, you do have uh, Linux or other operating system, as long as you have a Windows operating system, you can go ahead and use the software for customizing your keyboard. So click on this, and then once you click on it, just go ahead and follow the installation instruction, and there you go. Once open, you can go ahead and now use your software. So now let's go ahead and proceed with binding your FN1 and FN2 key. Let's start uh, doing key bindings for FN1 and FN2 first. Okay, as you can see, I have already pre-recorded bindings here on my screen. So if you go to FN1 layer, I have already set up my bindings. As you can see, this one is opening calculator. This three is a shortcut key for opening a program that I made. So if you go to FN2, it's the same thing. I've already binded opening a program, which is a different one for FN1 layer. So Let's go ahead and start from the beginning. So I want to bind FN1. So let's just remove it. Click the current binded FN key. Press this key, which is the reset function, and then click on save. So FN1 will be gone. All you need to do to rebind it, click the key that you desired which is pause, click on FN, and then hit on save. Now, your modifier FN or FN1, that will be under pause key. So let's try. So as you can see, FN1, we have here opening a calculator. So same drill. I'll just remove that. Hit apply. Let's say I want to... Bind a different shortcut. Um, let's say my computer. So let's choose letter M and then click on my computer, hit unsave. When you press FN and then the M key, it will open my computer. So it's either you press the regular FN key on your keyboard and then M, you will see. And then if you press the FN1, 
which is like I have already assigned to, pause and M key, it's the same drill. So let's go with FN2. FN2, I have already assigned that to scroll lock key. So same drill, like uh, what I did earlier. So let's just uh, unbind. Like this reset, click on save to unbind it uh, totally. If you want to bind the key, again, the FN2 key. So click the scroll lock key as my sample. Click on FN2, then hit on save. So now FN2 is my second layer of function key. So I program opening a notepad here. Let's choose a different one instead. So let's say I want to do some commands. So show desktop task manager. Let's do task manager. So I'll put in the execution, which is on letter T. Click on task manager, assign this job for the letter T and then press and save. So if you press scroll lock, plus the T button or the T key, it should open task manager. Bear in mind the task manager, it will be opening as a control out delete in particular. So let's just unbind it. Let's say I want to bind run command, which is usually it's Windows and then R key combination. So same drill. I'll choose letter R and then click run as a command. So it will be binded. Click on save and it will apply. Now press scroll lock in R. Okay, so you will see it opened. So that's how you do it. Actually, you can go ahead and mix and match the shortcuts that you would like to do, the bindings that you would like to do for your FN and F1 key. Like what it said earlier, think of it as a special shift key that you can go ahead and maximize it. Whether you're gaming, working, or other things you do on a daily basis. Okay, so that's it for FN1 and FN2. Let's proceed with the tab function. Let's go with the final topic for today, which is the tab function. In the normal terms, it's being called tap and hold. Imagine guys a light switch that can do two things. First, tap, which is a quick flick up, turns the light on, and then hold. This is what keeping your finger on the switch for a moment that makes the lights go into a dimming mode. There, are, there is one thing that is affecting both. It's what you call sensitivity. Sensitivity is like a stopwatch. And, you know, the function of a stopwatch is it, it's the amount of time that separates a quick flick, which is the tap, and hold. This, this software uses this tiny timer to decide which action to perform. So now let's go ahead and do this. So the sensitivity can be accessed through settings. If you go here, you will see tap. All you need is just turn this on. So the timer that I'm telling you guys is this. So the higher the timer, the slower is the time that they will react. If you move the sensitivity to 10 milliseconds, it's like it's very sensitive. So you can go ahead and hold a particular key on a matter of time before it changes. So let's say I just put it in 10. Or let's say I put it on 29 or whatever. So let's go with binding a tab key. Let's say I want to change c to a okay so let's open a notepad here okay okay there you go so click the c key 
and then click on A, and then save. Now, guys, you will see the C will turn to A. If you press normally the C key, it will become A. But if you tap and hold, it will become C. Tap and hold for a certain time. There you go. Tap and hold for a certain time. There you go. So you can actually combine it with something else if you want. So let's just unbind this, unbind, reset, and then click on save. Let's say you want to do a control a shortcut. Let's say let's do key combination. Okay, again, press C as a sample. Let's do copy function. Control C is the shortcut key, normally for a copy. Press and save. So let's type this, highlight all. If you press C, it will just copy it and then paste. Where if you press and hold C, it will become the normal C key. See, that's how you can go ahead and maximize everything. So let's just remove the binding, press and save. And so there you have it, guys. So again, uh, my challenge to you is you can go ahead and do a lot of combination. All of this that you see in the bottom, the keys, even the mouse clicks, you can go ahead and bind it. Multimedia function, which is the normal one that you're seeing. Pause, mute, stop. And the macro that you would like to create, you can go ahead and bind it as well. Even uh, simple commands or other commands that you would like to do. You can go ahead and maximize these three features, the, the one that we have discussed today. So if you have further questions, if you love this video, just click like. And if you do have some suggestions or other remaining questions that's still floating in your mind, you can go ahead and leave it in our comment section. Okay, again, thank you so much for your time. And this is Red Slayer. Enjoy Dragonairs and see you around.